our March 25th edition of ICC Hinchess Banner Blitz. Thank everyone for joining us this evening and we have a few announcements. Uh, first, we'll take a look at uh, what's uh, news here on ICC. Let's see, uh, we can see that Grandmaster Misa Pap is going over some key games from some old classic matches. Of course, Yermo teaching the Botvinnik Semislav not to be missed. There we see our Hinshes broadcast from last week. And again, Aljek and Capablanca, classic matches. Very instructional. You can see all over here, Aljek and Irva, Aljek and Capablanca again, Steinitz versus Lasker. And also, very good to note, ICC wins the bid to host the online version of the Super Nationals. For those not familiar, every four years, the Scholastics Championships combine the elementary, the <clears throat> junior high, and the senior high into one mega tournament. Now, I was fortunate to go to this, uh, well, I guess it would be about four years ago when it was in uh, Tennessee at the Gaylord. And absolutely awesome. I think that year they set a record, had something like 5,800 kids. And what's that, 5,800 plus parents? So what an event. And that's pretty much it, except one more thing. The National Open, which this past year was actually on ICC, has now announced that they're going to have the over-the-board chess return June 16th to 20th. The, the event, I spoke to Al Lossoff last night, the event will be at the Westgate Hotel, and uh, already they have uh, 100-plus uh, entries that had signed up for last year and have rolled over, plus uh, they're starting to get new entries. So... For the details on that, you can go to VegasChessFestival.com, check it out, and they do a great job. They run a great tournament, and all the satellite events will be announced as they are, you know, secured. <clears throat> anyway, that's a bit of good news, a little return to normalcy. Speaking of which, I'm not to make any political statement one way or the other, but the state of Florida here, I believe, has announced that uh, by... I think by April 5th, everyone 18 and over can get uh, vaccine, vaccinated. And of course, as the, the more developed world gets vaccinated, that does bring the challenge of the countries that are less able to afford. But at least in Florida, uh, they've already opened it up all school teachers, everyone over like the age of 55. And Monday, I think it's actually everyone over the age of 40. So serious progress there. And Coach Connor is here representing Altus Academy in Chicago. And Zevich Zevich, who is staying up late and had patience last week as we got off to a little bit of a late start. So, uh, we did have some rook endings to present, but I know we got a couple of people here that are late. I mean, that is, it's late for them. It's like one in the morning on European time zone. So, if they'd like to get in a game before we do our server presentation, announcement, you know, that that would be fine. Now, here's a screen activities <clears throat> that's very useful. You've got title players that are currently online. OK, uh, you can see even Hinchess is there not open for matches at the moment. You can see title games. You got seek ads. You got events that are coming up. You got tournaments and friends. Of course, I don't have any friends. And you have events. Okay, so let's see. I guess what should we go do, guys? Should we uh, look at some rook endings, or should we try to get in a game or two? <clears throat> On my other system, I'll just go back so I can monitor a bit. Well, one of the features that I really like in ICC is that they have, if you go under Action, Window, or View. So if you go under View, you get My Profile. My Profile has General and Games. General gives you various ratings at various time controls and so forth, various statistics. 
And if you go to games, the first section is your most recent games. Usually there, it's just my games from the various Banner Blitz sessions. And then down below, you can have your own game library, which I'm told holds up to 400 games. And what I've been doing is putting the lecture notes in there. Now, last week, <coughs> I believe we started with number 21. And so then we did 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. So this week, we'll start with this amazing position. And of course, rook endings are very important. Uh, Minev wrote a book for New in Chess back in the day, somewhere around 2004, and he mentioned that in tournament play, uh, almost 50% of all end games are rook end games. You know, which makes a great deal of sense if you think about it. Uh, better players don't play pawn to rook four and rook to rook three and get it chopped off. They throw their center pawns forward, and the rooks are the last pieces to mobilize, and therefore they have a very strong survivor bias. Well, here it looks like a challenge. Black's rooks seem to be doing a good job of containing these pawns, and it's really hard to imagine how white could possibly actually win this. Yeah, draw is no problem. He could just check, promote one of the pawns, win back the rook, give up the other pawn, and game would be an easy draw. <clears throat> pretty clear draw, in fact. But White has an amazing move here. Coach Connor, any thought what the move might be here? For White to actually play and win. And we can see this is a fairly recent creation, 2018. So amazingly enough, the winning move is what I call kind of a double deflection, I guess. Uh, rook G check, okay. The problem with Rook G check is he goes king up, and then whichever pawn you promote, he gives up a rook for it, and then he snaps off the other one. But let's see what you guys think of this move. When I first saw this move, I was stunned. I was like, wow. You sit there, you put the rook right in between two other rooks, and of course it's double deflection. Yeah, this, this is pretty sweet, right? <clears throat> uh, whichever rook takes it, of course, you promote. <clears throat> okay, now, of course, you're going to promote Check. the h-pawn. Now, notice when you promote, you also protected your b2 square. So there's no nonsense, you know, to worry about there. And then you get another queen, and that should be pretty easy-peasy to win. Yes. I, I agree with Coach Connor and Zevich Zevich. Rook to G2. Oh my goodness. What a move. If I played that move in a game, I would be stopping people on the street. Hey, did you see my move? <laughs> anyway, though, very, very, very sweet concept. Rook to G2. Bam, right there in the middle. Okay, what else we got? Let's see. This one I saw on Chess Kid, to be honest. And I like it so much. So it's got a couple of really nice poignant details. So, how to win this one? Of course, if you play pawn takes pawn check, rook takes pawn, king over, and pawn takes rook, that would simply be an absolutely epic fail. So you have to be a little more creative. Now, Kronk's Lannister is saying rook f1 check, and since I'm not showing the... Uh, Notation, I'm assuming he means rook c8 check. Check. Which is, in fact, the move. When he takes it, you pawn for it. Check. He has to go protect his rook. And now the sweetness, as they say, the cherry on top. Zugzwang. Black has only one move. So let me ask you this, though. After black plays his only move, what do you play for white? I was showing this to a student the other day, my boy Misha, and he played pawn takes rook equals queen, and then I just stared at him for a minute. King takes pawn is not quite legal because the uh, white's going up the board. <clears throat> Knight. 
Kronk's Lannister wants to get a knight. But here's the problem, sir. If you get a knight, he goes king to b8, and he traps newly anointed knight. And you probably have nothing better than knight b6, and then he takes it. Exactly. Kronk's Lannister is correct. This is one of those extremely rare situations where you must get a bishop. Queen or rook would be stalemate. And then, of course, once you get a bishop, it's pretty easy to zigzag him. And a few more moves. And you can see you're just going to pluck his pawns. Easy peasy. Uh, Coach Connor meant pawn takes rook. Exactly. Anyway, very beautiful concept. Rook check. Check. And then d5, zigzag. But the best problems always have that little sting on the end. Here, if you get a rook or a queen, it's stalemate. If you get a knight, he goes back and traps it. And therefore, Kronk's Lannister was correct. You have to get a bishop. The only way to win. Anyway, I quite like that one. Let's see. So that was 28. Let's see what number 29 is. Aha. This was amazing. I saw this. Someone posted this one on Facebook. And I thought this was absolutely fantastic. So here's the challenge. Well, first challenge is black is simply threatening to promote his pawn. Secondly, if white plays king to g6 and black promotes the pawn, of course white has rook h8 mate. But the problem there is if white plays king g6, black will wake up in time to play rook h4. Crunks Lannister, yes, good evening, sir. I saw you logged on a little earlier, but uh, just did a quick test earlier. By the way, is <clears throat> audio and video okay for everyone? So, <clears throat> uh, and by video, I mean video presentation of what we actually have to show. Not video presentation of I look so great, because I really don't. But that's another story. Anyway, the challenge here is if we play king to g6, he goes rook h4, forcing the exchange of rooks, after which he will promote the a-pawn. So, absolutely amazing. Bam! A little interference with pawn to b4. So, of course, he has to take it. If he gets a queen, you simply go king g6. And incredibly enough, he's unable to prevent the eventual rook h8 checkmate. So you take it. Bam! Pawn to c4. Same theme. He takes it. Pawn to d4. He takes it. Pawn to e4. By now, I think you guys are getting the drift. He takes it. But you're wondering, like I was, probably, where is this all leading? Besides, like having a lot of extra pawns. And now you go to g4. Now he takes it. Uh, pawn to g3. He might still be able to play, if we go back, on pawn to g3. If you were to go pawn to g3, I suspect he could still play rook h4. And then when you play pawn takes, then maybe he has time to get a, a promotion with a1. And then you try to get out of the way. And... It's still not so clear. So pawn to g3 might be possible. But the solution they give is pawn to g4. I'll check pawn to g3 later. Good idea. Now he takes that one. And now, first off, you threaten checkmate. The threat is simply rook to h8 mate. Black must play rook h4. And then you're, you go over, you threaten mate. He goes over, blocks your access to the back rank, and now you take the pawn on a2. Now you're threatening to capture the pawn on a5. When he goes c5, you take the pawn on a5. He could have also played a4, but on pawn to a4, if we go back, if he played pawn to a4, then you have rook h2, rook h4, and then rook to b2. 
and then he's helpless to stop rook b8. Thus, they give c5. Rook takes, rook back, guarding the back row, and then rook to a1, and the black rook is in a dilemma because he's unable to stop, guard the back rank, and prevent the rook h1 to h8 maneuver. And checkmate. Check, checkmate. Absolutely amazing concept. But I mean, this idea of giving away all these pawns, just amazing. My thought usually when I see such things is that the guy who created this clearly does not have cable TV or Netflix or Hulu or anything like that. Because it must have taken a lot of time to figure that one out. Anyway, what else we got? Domination. Always one of my favorite themes. So, here we have the usual in-game study unstoppable past enemy pawn that we'll promote. So the question is, what are we going to do in the meantime? Well, it turns out we do have a very useful move. We play rook to b7. We'll see later in a few moves why b7 is the square of choice. Of course, he promotes. We push. Now our threat is to actually promote as well and then skewer his queen. So he starts checking us. But already we can see that the rook on the b file stops queen to b2 check. And the rook on the 7th rank stops queen to g7 check. So the queen is rather limited in her mobility. Check. Now the white king starts heading up the board. Check. Keeps going up the board. Now again you can see the rook stops queen to b4 check. Check. Check again. King goes up the board. Check. Check. And now you can see how annoying it is for black that he has this pawn on a6. He's not able to play queen a6 check. He's not able to play queen b6 check. He has no diagonal check. And white is threatening simply to promote the pawn. When the black queen goes, it's to stop the pawn promotion. Check. You get a queen. And check. Check. And skewer. Pretty amazing concept that after rook b7, queens, and h7, the queen finds itself relatively powerless. Yes, I think these things are just absolutely beautiful. I mean, who says in games are boring, you know? Now, let's see, what number was that? That was domination. I think we have one more. Yes. This will be the last one for the evening. Stalemate. Mm -hmm. I don't remember this one. Well, let's see what the story is. I mean, obviously, if you play king in, I mean, this is a pretty standard technique that comes up, I think. Drawing technique. I mean, it looks like white is lost. If he goes king to g6, well, then rook check, Rook g5 check, you blast him away, take the pawn, two connected pass pawns, easy peasy as the kids would say. And your rook can't seem to get there to protect the pawn. Any ideas, guys, how white can salvage the seemingly hopeless situation? Rook b7 is suggested. The problem with rook b7, I think, is that he simply takes your pawn with check. When you go king g6, Rook g5, and the white king actually gets checkmated. And otherwise, if he takes the pawn and you don't go king g6, you know, he's just got two connected pass pawns. King e6, again, I think he can just play rook takes pawn on h5. No. You play the seemingly highly improbable rook to b5 double exclamation point. And I've seen this technique before, used a few times. Yes. And the point is, when he takes check. the pawn with check, you go king to g6. And when he takes your stalemate. rook... Stalemate. Yes, stalemate has been called. 
Now, what else could he do? If he moves his rook down, well then of course you have rook checkmate. So about the only other thing left would be to play rook g5 check. But after rook takes, pawn takes, king takes, king f7, king f5, you have a basic king and pawn endgame where the white and the black king is never actually able to gain the opposition and get in front of his pawn. So that's the theoretical draw, as Kronk's Lannister correctly points out. Anyway, very nifty, useful to know first move, saving what looks like a hopeless situation, thanks to our friend Stalemate. Good one. Okay, that wraps up our rook innings for the day. Incoming not, challenge. Uh, rated game of 5-0. Okay. Game started. Oh, and I got white. I'm not sure how useful that is, but okay. Whew, whew. Now that's interesting. Well, my thought is we've got to take it. After that, I don't have any thought. We do got to protect this guy, though. Wow. This is certainly no holds barred chess, my man. Take human bites. Coach Connor's asking whether it's better to castle kingside or queenside. In principle, you want to castle where you have the most pieces. Also, you want to give uh, regard to uh, which side they may be castled on. This is definitely a mess here. A little bit frisky play on both sides part here. And the hero days we would have been playing uh, Hero days, we would have been playing uh, knight takes e6 there. And then you're supposed to shout Nezhmetinov when you play such moves. I was not going to take that, but then I semi-mouse slipped. Ron, you're a liar. You know you wanted to take a pawn. You saw a pawn. You thought you could steal a pawn. Tell the truth. Not good. This turns south.
draw offered. Yeah, I can play knight f6 check. You go king e7, I go knight g8, and you just go back. I don't see any way to avoid. Game coming draw. Challenge. Good game, sir. Okay, Coach Connor. Looking to make trouble game for me next. Game started. Okay. Good game. Uh, <clears throat> I didn't see knight g6. Duh. <clears throat> It's early, but a quick water break here. <clears throat> no, 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 no. It's uh, actually spring, uh, not spring water, but distilled water. And the point being that I'm supposed to... Uh, I had kidney stone several years ago, so I'm supposed to drink a gallon of water a day. <laughs> Maybe a gallon of coffee is, in reality, what happens. Of course, you can argue that coffee has water in it, but I think in reality, you know, that's interesting. Of course, pawn takes pawn as a direct transposition to the dreaded Smith Mora, but what is knight takes pawn? I guess we'll find out. Probably dangerous. Uh, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> kidney stones are caused by mineral buildup, and so therefore actual uh, spring water and all that's not a, as good. Do, distilled water is supposed to be the best choice. Now, of course, I like to go Fianchetto when I play the Sicilian, but uh, in this situation, he might have a little too much early heat aimed at me. So he's got like a little Check. bit of a smith Moore thing going here, doesn't he? But I figured it's probably good to eliminate that F3 knight. That's usually a, a key one of their guys. Now if I sack here, is he really going to is he really gonna sack on me? Who knows? Could happen. Let's see if we can hold up the freight train here. He's definitely all in here. Wow, that's a, kind of the direct approach. But actually, Bishop d6 probably... Well, not clear. Because I guess we could take, take, play b4, and then go after d4 pawn. But now, it feels like we gained a pretty useful tempo. Is this playing with fire? Probably. But what the heck? What the heck? Whoa, he's he's all in with his best Nezhmedinov imitation. Please, Ron, learn to play chess, Check. dude. Jeez. 
seriously. Oh well, let's have some fun. That was stupid. That was silly. Well, that's okay. It's okay. Yeah, that's the move I was looking at. That is the move I was looking at. <clears throat> well, Ron, a decision would be good. Maybe this is the simplest. Eh. I wanted to play rook b8. That was my original thought. Rook b8, he can't take, but then he has bishop b5, only move. And then I wanted to play knight e4, but I kind of winced out on it. Check. I thought you were going to recapture that one, dude. Yeah, you had rook takes. Okay, I gotta speed it up here. Gotta step it up. Go ahead and get these uh, rooks connected. A little safe Check. there. I definitely am not playing this the sharpest, but I think we'll get there. Checkmate. Okay. Uh, interesting opening there with d4, coach. <clears throat> yeah, Kronk's line up here saying I've never played uh, rook b8 and then sack the queen and the rook for the queen and two bishops. Let's see, Massey. Oh, yeah. Game what to do with started. This
Yeah, Fisher had a game years ago. Um, well, of course, years ago if it was Fisher. <laughs> Chalcotea played this exchange variation. It played an interesting idea, but he played like with eight, knight h6, f6, and knight f7, threatening to play e5. And at the right moment, Bobby played uh, c4, blew him up on that uh, a2, g8 diagonal. Ah, the things we remember. And the things we don't. <laughs> Normally you would think to retreat the bishop to h2, but then bishop h6 is a very clever resource. Okay, so now we're going to get this IQP type situation. i got to take that. got to trade these guys. So, as Magnus could say, yes, we could argue we got the bishop pair, but, you know, he's pretty actively placed. Ah, maybe I should have gone there first. Or there. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Hate to weigh, give away one of your bishops, but sometimes you got to do it. Check. usually with Mr. Massey if I don't get mated out of the opening that's usually a big plus so I think this time we got good chances of not getting mated so
is this where I get myself checkmated? Check. Check. I thought he had another idea there, but okay. Check. Run, Forrest, run. Check. Ah, darn it. Black forfeits on time. Tough game. Tough game. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I was thinking rook f7 check. And then at first I thought I had to play king h6. But then I, I realized just got to go full Magnus on him, go king g8. I just need a move to get my rook over to f4, get back behind that pawn. Make some trouble. I mean, because if I go rook f7, incoming king challenge, takes, knight takes f5. If I go bishop takes f5, rook takes and take, then he has rook check and rook takes on h3. <clears throat> anyway, my knights. Oh, ah, uh, fellow streamer. Okay. Game started. Good to see you, buddy. Anyway, great game, Mr. Massey. Great game. Not a very exciting continuation to be sure. Not sure why I was afraid of d4 there. <clears throat> Speaking of the Vegas Chess Festival, you know, like a lot of years I go there and I help them do commentary. And uh, one year, a couple of 1900 players playing a game something like this and they get some position like this and turns out one guy handed me the score sheet but they were both there in the room to check out the commentary and uh, you know we're looking at something like this and turns out it's all been played before well thank God I wasn't I was reasonably politically correct and I wasn't too critical of either side <clears throat> Check. That F3 knight, that's usually the guy that makes trouble. <laughs> oh, he's definitely teeing us up for the B4. Mini there. Do we have time to castle? Why was I thinking he can't play D4 there? Duh. Ah. That was stupid. Why was I thinking he didn't have time to play d4? Because I wasn't thinking, that's why. I made a mess of this. For some reason I was thinking d4 and b4. Otherwise I should have played knight c6. Duh. Now we got problems. Ah, problems, problems, structural problems. What was I doing?
This is not happiness, to be sure. But maybe it's not terminal. And there he was with his favorite Sicilian, and not a whiff of counterplay in sight. Oh, well done, sir. Well done indeed. But who knows? Who knows? Where is he going now? Time. In broad daylight, stole a pawn. I'm not saying it's great, but oops. Sorry about that. Good game, dude. Yeah, of course he couldn't trade, but he could have played bishop back to b1. Or right after the trade, he could have played c4, create an outside pass pawn 2 to 1. <clears throat> Anyhow. Check. 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 White resigns. Hey, sorry about that, buddy. A uh, little bad break there with the bishop. Uh, yeah, queen d4 actually was winning the pawn, but of course he still have some compensation on the queen side. Good opening. Uh, yeah, definitely a heads up play there playing d4 when you had the moment. That was a big moment. Yeah, instead of castles, I definitely should have played knight c6. Held up that uh, d4 break. Okay, learn for next time. <clears throat> My knight says that's how I lost the first city championship. Uh, also, Mr. McKnight's has a, uh, a live stream. I'm uh, not sure about how many nights a week. Uh, he usually comes on a little later and pretty much plays on all platforms. Incoming challenge. Let's see. Coach Connor. Okay. Game started. This time I got white against the coach. Okay. What does he do against E4? And the scotch game. Haven't whipped that out in a while. I mean the scotch game. Bishop's opening. Someone played like that against one of my kids. I think you should just go here, I guess. I mean, that looks like a pretty sweet diagonal for the, uh, for the guy. Any 
anyway, I think uh, you got to like wait a little bit here. Hope you don't mind to have a little cough drop there. Yeah, that's a little tricky. If I if I go back to B three, do I need to worry about him giving me the double pump? The pawn to C five, pawn to C four, Rasmataz. No, he would go C five first. But then I could challenge his knight. But on C four, at least I keep his. Uh, Okay, but I do have to watch out for the C5, C4 nonsense. The old Noah's Arker. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now Noah's Ark is off the table. But if I go F4, I'm more exposed. What's more important here? Castling? Or development. Well, Ron, someone could make the argument that the castling is development. Part of me wants to go F5, F4. I mean, maybe F4 made more sense before his knight had access. Oh, pawn sack. Now that's a little tricky. If I take with a piece, he could potentially take on d4. Let's just take with a pawn. That's a very healthy pawn. That could be very useful when we go knight to e6, hopefully, one day. Krathunkadunk. Oh, no, no, no. Connor, this is going to get expensive, buddy. But I do see your point. I guess. You're doing it that way. But I thought that had two flaws. Simplest, I think I can just go in here. Try the old escape the pin technique. Okay, we got to exit on the way out. Take something. Duh! Ron, queen d4. Okay, anyway, not necessary. You know, queen takes knight, I was going to go bishop e3 and f4 and try and whip up some nonsense. Check. Okay, this feels like I retained some extra pieces here. After this break, I'll <clears throat> after this game, I'll take a very short break, the uh, one-hour restroom break that I think senior citizens are entitled to, even though I'm not very senior.
I mean, Knight F7 had its moments. Server announcement. Check. Check. Yeah, I wanted to go knight d7 and knight to b6 check and try and mate on the a file, but yeah, I think mate will happen soon enough here. Check mate. My knights are saying Ron 13 bishop g5 from our game. Let's go to the uh, the video library view my profile now from this game, Coach Connor. F6 in the opening. This is already, you know, it could be classified as an opening mistake. Anytime you move the F pawn in the opening for white or black, you have to be very careful. You make your king much more vulnerable. As you saw later down the road, you had trouble castling, and that created more problems for you, okay? So, yeah, be very careful about moving that F pawn. So, instead, uh, moves like pawn takes pawn, followed by knight F6 or bishop C5, those are the most popular moves, okay? Now, what Knights is saying, let's go to my profile. Okay, it's up here. Let's go to games. And most recent games. So let's see. He's saying 13 Bishop G5. This is not a recent game. This is a game from last time. So let's close that one. This does not seem to have the most recent games. Unless they're at the top here. Oh, there, there you are. They're at the top. Duh. Recent games at the top. Makes sense. Okay. Oh, let's do this. Forward to the end. No, 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 no. We want uh, board flip. Okay, so he's saying 13, bishop g5. Mr. Massey, I'll be with you in one second. I just wanted to see uh, his comment here. 13, Check. bishop to g5. Well, I mean, bishop g5 is a move, yes. Instead of uh, 13, rook d1. On bishop g5, 1, I could just castle. If you go bishop into f6, trade, trade, knight c6, it's a game. Okay. Uh, yeah, but bishop g5 wouldn't be bad. And after rook d1 here, my castles was definitely a miscue. I should have played knight to c6. That would have been the ticket. Anyway, let's go ahead and play Mr. Massey while he's still up. Uh... Game started. Oh, oh no, he got white. This guy is a killer with the white pieces. What is it that he does that's so annoying? Like everything. Oh, I remember. Darn it, he plays d4. That's right. I remember now. He plays d4. Okay, then we get this kind of benoni ish situation. Now, the sharpest variation here is supposed to be something with b5 or something. Otherwise, well, it can be a challenge to get counterplay here. The guy seems to know what he's doing.
the theoretical variation is to play there. But how does that work? That doesn't work now.
that was purely an accident. The guy played a great opening. Well, of course, the game's not over, but... Check. Now, <clears throat> do we go king up, or do we uh, pin a second bishop? Maybe bishop back. And then, and then you got queen e7 options. Duh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, maybe bishop f8 was safer. In the words that famous Bent Larson, it's not illegal to threaten making one, right? I thought maybe Pawn H5 was coming. Abort requested. Abort. White resigns. Oh. Oh. I never saw abort like during a game. Anyway, sorry about that, sir. Good game. Uh, somewhere along Bishop B8, I guess things got confused. But you had a good opening. <clears throat> anyway, we got time for one, maybe two more games. And uh, still waiting for my friend, J. Doe, to show up. Because I got a special surprise for him in honor of Magnus Carlson and Hikaru Nakamura. Coach Connor said he played terrible that game. Yes, uh, gave away too many pieces. Too many pieces. So, Mr. McKnight, you got one more game in you? Crunk's master had to get off to sleep. Totally understandable. It's early morning wee hours there for him. And, uh, yeah, this game was very clear. Now, 94 is supposed to be a freeing maneuver, but of course there's tactics. But bishop takes, rook takes, bishop takes, yeah, rook d4. <coughs> That's one of the tricks. But, why can't he play something just like, uh, I thought he could do something here and then just play c3 somewhere along here. There's actually, in my sniper book, a game black one where the bishop was not protecting the knight. I don't know what happened to the bishop. And white, like around move 14, went rook e4 and just forked two pieces and black resigned, you know. Anyway, tricky, tricky business there. Had to go sniper on him. The guy's too strong with that queen takes d4 variation. On d4, cd4, queen takes d4, uh, 
He just seems to get kind of routine positions that he likes and plays well, you know. And McKnight thinks he missed a move. Mr. McKnight, you up for another game? So I may have to go fishing in the pool, see who we pull up. Send out a seek. Three O is a little fast for an old guy like me. Surprisingly, I find that I perform much worse at 3-0. One of my friendly senior citizens pointed that out to me. Anyway, we could also go... Let's see... The tactic bot is not on here. The Learning Center, that would be a good place to go. Well, let's see what we got over here. Practice and improve. What do we have? Bullet, Blitz, Standard, against these various computers. This one is actually a little bit tricky, the Queen and Knight. Now, King and Rook is interesting. Though. Game started. Oh, seriously good player. Okay. And it's a slow game. Okay, it's game on. That's a, an official pawn sacrifice. Yeah, maybe I press the envelope there a little. I'm going this way. Maybe I press the envelope a lot. This might be a little too bold. Maybe a lot too bold. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I was thinking about that one. I have may have real cause to regret this. Well, maybe not. How bad can it be? Famous last words, right? Check. 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 
check. It's a tough call. I mean, black is a pawn ahead. Check. Game drawn. drawn. Interesting, interesting game, sir. And thanks for dropping in on us. Eh, kind of hard to say. I mean, it is an extra pawn, but my king is a little exposed. I'm not sure whether I should trade on d5. Eh, food for thought later. So, uh, looking for one more game. Mr. McKnight's, one more before you go. Incoming challenge. All right. Game started. I get white this time. Not sure what it means, but what the heck. Let's go here. <clears throat> I did something like this last time against him. Went all hippo on him. Whoa! <laughs> can always trust him to aim at that F pawn. That is his thing. And it's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Not a bad thing at all. Okay, so he is let's just go one more and see what he's up to. The question for me is, where's my king going? Can't stay in the center of the board forever. Okay, that's going to be an investment, I think, unless there's a trick. Oh, God, I feel like I'm promoting the Charlie story. Sniper with white video or something. Although this is actually really a true reverse hippo. A couple of good books came out on the hippo. Alessis DeSantis and another guy. I mean, you could tell they were real works of love. But of course, when you play like this with this third rank defense, you're really kind of like taking your chances. Now that's interesting because if I take on e4, I think I'd rather let him give back the piece this way if he wants. But at least I'll try to keep a little grippy on the e4 square. Try to keep his dark squared bishop from uh, doing bad things to me. Still don't know where I'm putting my king though. I mean, even after I win the pizza. There are still questions. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, we know we're going to get rid of that knight. That guy. Well, for lack of a better plan, full speed ahead. I guess queen g4 followed by castle and queenside was definitely another option there. Too bad we didn't think of it earlier, but okay. This is just not really getting off the ground for the white team, for the black team, that is. I think I want that pawn. Why I want that pawn? Oh, to strip his king side a bit, that's why. And full, full speed ahead if we're not getting mated. Big if. 
Now, computers, by the way, love running the h pawn. That's their thing. So, why not run that h pawn? They, they love it in these fianchetto positions. not sure exactly why I'm not wiping out that light squared bishop of his, but okay. Anyway, now for the first time I feel like my king can go queenside because he's a long way from stirring up anything over there. And on the other side we can party on, hopefully. I don't really know what that does. Ah. Darn it, now he's going to go there and try to make trouble. Ah, this guy is trouble, trouble, trouble. Always trouble. Check. I need to get homeboy in the game. That that's who needs to show up. Funny thing is I was gonna play F3 to secure the G4 bishop until I realized I was handing him the fat square on E3. Which brings to mind, why don't I go that away? That away. Okay, one thing at ooh. Uh aha. Uh -huh. Is it dangerous? Always ask, is it dangerous? I think we can take that guy. And he goes bishop g5, which surely he will. What surely got to do with it? Then I want to go king back to d1. Ah, oh, see, he's trying to set me up the other way. Tricky guy. Where's that knight going? Let's get back in here. I mean, there, yeah, there were more aggressive knight d7 moves and stuff. Let's offer to trade this if nothing bad is going to happen to us. Anyway, put the knight back so that it stops this knight... Uh, to g5, bishop to g5 business. Okay, let's trade that puppy. And let's get this guy to work, finally. Quit collecting unemployment there, dude. Okay, he's got a little time issue here. A little time issue. Oh, this is going to get expensive. Okay, all we got to do now is get our stuff out. Let's go after this guy. Ooh! That square he found on F3. Even a boatload of material down, the guy is making trouble. Black coming for chess on time. Okay, it is 7.30, but now Massey wants me to, to do one more, and since he stayed up so late... Okay, and then this will be the last game. Game, Game on, sir. Started. And at least I got white. Okay. See what he does. Man after my own heart. I just wanted to see if he was going to really take that bishop that night. Yasser for a while was advocating playing something like this. I think he called it some botvinic system or something. 
everything's about vending system, right? Okay. I really thought he was going to try to take my knight on c3. He does that, you know, with the other colors, you know. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Positionally dubious, no doubt. Oh, why didn't I do that? That would have been the thing to do. Darn, darn, darn. We're all so smart after the fact, aren't we? That's interesting. Okay. That surprises me a little. Okay, it makes sense. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. All right, we don't have all day. Some kind of decision here would be good. Okay, I forgot about something, but life goes on. Yes, we don't recommend you play like this at home or elsewhere. Now, of course, this is a bit of a role change. He usually attacks me. I never get to attack him. That's usually the way we do this.
I just live in dread that I'm going to overlook something. I mean, not that I haven't already. <laughs> but, also, why wasn't I playing Rook G1 there? Hello? What are you, nuts? You know, why I didn't play Rook G1? That is a great question, Ron. That is a great question. Oh, well, we had an idea. Well, that's really good to hear that you had an idea. Who knows? I certainly don't. Check. 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 Black forfeits on time. Hmm. Another tough game, sir. <laughs> that was a <clears throat> bit out of character for my style, I must say. G4, H5. Best caveman format. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. And thank everyone for showing up tonight. I know it's late over there in Europe. But appreciate it, and I will see you guys next week. Thank ICC for sponsoring us, and thank everyone for playing.